Hey guys, welcome back to the Style and Beauty Doctor here on YouTube and in today's video we're going to be talking about three mineral sunscreens and I guess you can say a dermatologist approved because two dermatologists in a recent video that I did on chemical versus physical sunscreens mentioned some sunscreens that they loved and I was like, you know what, let me check that out. And then another one was actually made from a dermatologist brand. So we're going to be talking about these. I tested them out. They were doing some things and some of them weren't doing some things, so keep watching. So first up we have the Isden Arifatona Actinica, it is a mouthful, Ultra Light Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50+. It's a 100% mineral sunscreen, water resistant for up to 40 minutes. Um, it is the active ingredient is zinc oxide 11%. So let me go through my notes. It's been some time since I did my um, trial. Um, I had to kind of put a pause on putting extra stuff on my face and whatnot because I got a chemical peel, which I'll you'll be able to see that in another video. Um, but this one has a very fragrant smell. There is fragrance in it. Um, it is very light and has a very liquidy texture. Dr. Corey Hartman is the one who actually mentioned that he likes it and he uses it uh, regularly. We can, you know, go roll a clip of what Dr. Hartman had to say about this sunscreen. I like that contain minerals that go on very elegantly and do not leave a chalky film. Um, my favorite is by Isden. It's called Aeropatona Actinica. It is a um, zinc oxide based sunscreen that also has some antioxidants in it. And it's mm -hmm. a, a thin emulsion. So it's not going to feel heavy or greasy. I have it on right now. I wear it every day. Uh, it's good for people with oilier skin, acne prone skin. So this is $55. You get 3.4 fluid ounces. Um, typically a lot more than I personally would like to spend on a sunscreen. But I did find that the texture of this was very light. It has a very liquidy kind of feel to it. Um, I would say that this is something that would be amazing if you have oily skin. Although I wouldn't rule it out if you have dry skin because in, maybe in certain climates or during certain seasons, you might be able to get away with wearing something like this depending on um, the moisturizer that you wear underneath. Uh, I really enjoyed it. There is fragrance in it. Um, for me, I don't have typically have a reaction to fragrance in products. What usually happens with me with fragrance is that like my nose just doesn't, you know, my, my nose isn't rocking with it, right? So this does have a very strong fragrance, uh, a strong smell when you put it on um, that thankfully doesn't linger on. So I was actually able to wear this throughout the day without any issues. I like that it's water resistant because, you know, when I was able to work out at the gym, I didn't have, you know, sunscreen melting all over the place. So that was great as well. Worked really nicely underneath makeup. This is something that if you don't mind the price point, you do get a significant amount of product, 3.4 fluid ounces um, for $55, where, you know, typically you're getting like 1.7 fluid ounces for like maybe like $30 with some of these um, sunscreens at Sephora. So I, I feel like it's kind of like comparable if you're like that, you know, in that 20 to $30 price point, typically for like a 1.7 fluid ounce of sunscreen, the price wouldn't be that bad. Um, but I enjoyed this. As with most mineral sunscreens though, when you're removing it at the end of the day, you may want to look into doing a double cleanse because the way that mineral sunscreens tend to sit on the skin, uh, I find, and you know, a lot of other people find too, but you know, everybody's different. I do find that I do need to go in with an oil-based cleanser first and then with my regular gel cleanser afterwards to you know really get this off. Because if I just go straight in with the gel cleanser, it, 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 it's, it's filmy. me. It doesn't all get off. So look into a double cleanse if you're using a mineral sunscreen like this. Um, but if you've ever tried this, let me know in the comments, would you try it? Get all chitty chatty about this sunscreen. So next up is the Isden Arifatona Ageless. Ooh, I love a good mouthful. Ultra light emulsion, broad spectrum SPF 50, designed for photo aging defense. This is, again is 100% mineral sunscreen, water resistant for up to 40 minutes. This was one that was talked about by Dr. Cheryl Burgess. Um, she actually mentioned that she does some uh, work with the brand and they have 
a lot of amazing sunscreens. Unfortunately, <laughs> a lot of them aren't available in the U.S. because, you know, they they haven't been FDA approved. Do some consulting work with a company called Isden out of Barcelona, and they are known for their sunscreens. They have a sunscreen for everything. The only one okay. that is available in the U.S. which had to be FDA approved is um, Air Fatana. Mm -hmm. And Air Fatana actually is a sunscreen that also reverses sun damage. So wow. Just, yeah, anybody that I have who has pre-skin cancers or anything like that, I will tend to put them on that sunscreen. So the Isden Ageless Sunscreen is $66. Now that, that price tag feels like a lot, <laughs> but if you're someone who, you know, you're typically spending like $30 or so at Sephora for a sunscreen and you're getting one ounce or 1.7 fluid ounces, this is very comparable to a person like that then because you're getting 3.4 fluid ounces for $66. So it's kind of like double the price, double the product kind of thing. Um, this is a tinted mineral sunscreen. Um, the tint on this is like a peachy kind of color and it blends in pretty nicely into the skin. I wouldn't say it's like invisible. I did notice that there was still like a little teeny tiny, like such a little bit of tint um, on my skin after using that. Um, that went away when I used makeup. Now I know not everyone's gonna wanna wear makeup when you're wearing a uh, mint, um, a mineral sunscreen uh, but there are others that are a little bit better in terms of you know the, the no ash so make sure you check out my mineral sunscreen playlist where I go through lots and lots of mineral sunscreens for dark skin and then I have a blog post that kind of tallies the best ones I've tried so far um, that's definitely something to bookmark because you know the more I try the more I add so bookmark it and, and keep referencing it but um the tint was a little, it was a, just a, like nothing disrespectful like the super goop or, you know, any of the other types of tinted mineral sunscreens that I've tried before. But there was like a little, and I think if you have a deeper complexion than me, that the little bit of a hint that I saw might be a little bit more uh, pronounced. Now, quite like the other Isden sunscreen, this one's very lightweight. Um, the texture is very liquidy, so you might want to kind of just like pour it into your hand like that as opposed to putting it on the back of your hand um, because it can get a little runny. I think if you have oily skin, you will really like this, but I wouldn't rule it out if you have dry skin because there are certain times of year or if you live in a specific type of climate where if you have a dry skin where you could still kind of use something like this, you just have to make sure that the moisturizer and your hydrating serum and all that other stuff in your routine is like on point. Now, there is fragrance in here, um, so if you're someone where you have an allergic reaction to fragrance or you just prefer to not use products that have fragrance in them, then of course this might be something that you would bypass. I do wonder why they have fragrance in here. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating that maybe the product doesn't smell so nice. They, this brand, Isden, has a lot of sunscreens, but um, a lot of them aren't sold here in the US. So I do wonder if the ones that are sold outside of the US um, have some fragrance-free options. But nonetheless, I did enjoy this. I did find that it worked really nicely with makeup. It's also water resistant, so I like that as well for when I was at the gym. You also do want to consider a double cleanse in the evening because again, the way mineral sunscreens tend to sit on the skin, it makes it a little harder to remove at the end of the day, especially if you're gonna be reapplying and, and doing things like that. So make sure you, you know, just look into the double cleanse. A double cleanse may not be for everyone, but it is quite helpful, especially when you wanna remove um, your mineral sunscreen. So I prefer a cleansing oil because you know, when I'm wearing makeup, I wear a lot of, I mean, clearly I'm wearing a lot of makeup here. I prefer a cleansing oil, but some people do use micellar water as their first step in their double cleanse. That's not, it, it, not to say that it wouldn't work for me, it would just take too long. I'd rather just get in and get out, but if you're someone where you're just kind of wearing your sunscreen, a micellar water might be a good option for you as your first step in your double cleanse. So look into it because what you don't want is to not properly remove these mineral sunscreens and then, you know, have further issues down the line because we don't like further issues down the line. So you might be like, well, what's the difference between the two? And their website knew you were gonna ask that because as per the website, um, it says that both Arifatona sunscreens contain zinc oxides, uh, DNA repair zones, and antioxidants in their respective formulas. 
Arifatona actinica is designed as a daily mineral sunscreen for actinic damage, and Arifatona ageless is designed for photoaging defense, targeting, targeting the signs of photoaging through a peptide complex and peptide Q10. Arifatona ageless also has a versatile tint. If that confused you a little bit, I'll leave a link to the brand's website where you can kind of read up more about the differences between the two. So last but not least, the Murad Environmental Shield City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50 PA++++. Um, the funny thing about this, I was looking all up and through the ingredients list like, okay, because the bottle doesn't say it's fragrance free. And I'm looking all through the ingredients list. I'm like, okay, nothing says fragrance. I don't see any of the typical single component fragrance uh, listings there. Then I'm like, okay, I'm seeing other things that I don't know what this is. Am I going to have to Google this whole thing because I'm already having such a time <laughs> with this light? And then I looked at something totally that I didn't think I would see it on their website to find out that this is in fact fragrance free. I wish they would put it on the bottle, you know? Like just put it right there. And then the same thing happened when I was looking for, to see if this was water resistant because I wore this at the gym and it wore really nicely. And you know, when I go to the gym, it's like, it's, a, it's really hot and sweaty. Um, those Isden sunscreen said they were water resistant. This one didn't, but then I kind of looked more on the website and it actually is water resistant as well, up to 40 minutes, same as the other two. Um, this one though is $68 for 1.7 fluid ounces. So this is significantly more expensive than the Isden um, because although the Isden is like similar in price, you're getting twice the amount of product with the Isden. Um, but there may be some things that the Myriad has that makes it a better option for you. So let's go over a couple more things. So I found this to be very lightweight as well. This is also tinted. It has like a little peachy tint to it. Um, it blends in really well. This is something that says it's good for all skin types. I have oily skin. I didn't find it to be very heavy. It might not be something I would want to wear in the summertime, but like for my spring, fall, and uh, possibly winter, that that would be a good contender there. It's 100% mineral. The active minerals in here are 2.7% titanium dioxide and 10% zinc oxide. I actually got this from the brand in a recent PR package, and I wanted to reach out to the brand because it came, it, it, it kind of felt like, were y'all watching my video, Mira people? Because I feel like this sunscreen came like right after I published the video with um, Dr. Pearl Grimes and the iron oxides. Um, so that was really, really great timing, but it blocks 89% of blue light. Um, and then they gave me an explanation that they allowed me to read on camera. So thanks for that again, Murad. Um, we measured this in a transmittance test specifically on blue light only. Blue light is of particular interest because it is the highest energy light of the visible spectrum and we are suddenly exposed to much more blue light than our skin has been through evolution. Blue light comes from devices and these days a lot of people spend hours and hours in front of blue light emitting devices. Even 20 years ago that was not the case so blue light is kind of a new threat to our skin. The energy that comes from blue light is less than UV but the accumulation of it really adds up. Being in front of a computer screen all day isn't as bad as being in the sun all day. The sun emits visible and UV light, which we, we knew from that video, but it still, but it does still cause oxidative stress in the skin that accumulates into damage and can accelerate aging and pigmentation. Now, the 89% blocking of the blue light, you might be like, well, why doesn't it block all of it? Which is a question I had. Um, and she said that it doesn't block all visible light. Something that blocks all visible light would be like black or dark. All right, so here's the thing. Now, when you're talking about like the blue light being emitted from your devices, I don't think you need to have like a whole big new special skincare regimen. And I kind of side eye brands that promote that for marketing. I mean, yes, it's something that we need to be aware of, but a lot of times you already have things in your skincare routine, antioxidants that can help kind of combat the effects of some of these, the, the blue light coming from these devices. But also a lot of these devices also have settings where you can turn the, the light down. So 
to me, <laughs> you know, just turning it down to me, I feel like is a very easy, simple fix. And just making sure that, you know, your skincare routine has antioxidants, you're wearing sunscreen and, and yada yada. Um, however, this Murad sunscreen, if you watch the video on the visible light and the iron oxides and you're very much interested in getting a sunscreen that ticks a lot of those boxes. Now, mind you, iron oxides aren't the only materials that that help us with visible light. Antioxidants help as well. But if you're someone that where you were kind of looking to tick off as many boxes as possible when it came to a sunscreen, this one's ticking off a lot of boxes. The only thing is that the $68 price tag might be a little, it might be a little like jarring for some, you know? But I have to say, it wore really nicely. I like that it's water resistant. It's very lightweight. Murad lists that it works for all skin types. I can see that. Um, if you have dry skin, I would definitely make sure that whatever moisturizer or whatever hydrating serum and whatnot that you have in your routine, it's conducive to whatever the season is. Then if you have oily skin, because you're not going to be wanting to wear some big heavy moisturizer in the summertime. So just make sure that you're wearing the right type of moisturizer on underneath this uh, for your skin type and for your climate and the season and so on and so forth. Um, it's also great that this is fragrance free because um, a lot of people are looking for fragrance free options. It's a shame that these weren't fragrance free but you know this one I had to go and look and search to see that it was fragrance free but good to know that it is for those who are looking for fragrance free products. So each of these have their pluses and their minuses and um, some of them are going to be better for others than than others. So that's where you kind of go in. I will leave links below where you can go to the prospective websites and look at the ingredients and kind of tick things off and make sure that it's going to be something that's going to match well with your lifestyle. Um, I actually liked all three in terms of performance and just the way that they felt on my skin and it worked well with my lifestyle. I like that they were water resistant, but of course, if you're like just going to the gym and you have a sweat session and maybe your sweat session is only like 15 20 minutes long just because it says that it's water resistant up to 40 minutes doesn't mean that you shouldn't you know wash your face and reapply so make sure that when you get wet that you are reapplying your sunscreen um, immediately and then throughout the day depending on what you have going on you are likely going to need to reapply your sunscreen every two hours just to make sure you didn't miss any spots and nothing degraded throughout the day. This video was a little stressful to film. I, I just gotta say, like, I I'm not complaining, I'm just saying. You know, the, the light moving in and out and hopefully it was enjoyable <laughs> for you to watch though, because, you know, all throughout the frustrations, I still like to share my sparkling personality. But anyway, let me know in the comments which one of these mineral sunscreens would you try. I'll have them linked below so you can shop them and you know check out more information, but I would love to hear from you which one would you try. If you've tried any of them already, let us know your experiences. Follow me on social, the links will be in the description box, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.